Hey Year 6, hope you are all well. Um, um, I'm back again to read you. I think we'll probably be finishing the story. These chapters don't look very long. Um, so we left the story in the last session where the Yark, poor little Yark, had, um, had had a terrible time. You know, already he was sort of really depressed and sad, having left Madeline, ended up in this forest. Um, I think it was in France. And um, yeah, so he's he's been captured by these children who've been abandoned. And um, they are mistreating him. They are not treating him well. Um, and towards the end, he was he'd sort of given up, hadn't he? He was just waiting for the end to come about. So let's find out. Number 11. Chapter 11 is called The Breakfast. It's daybreak. A ray of sunlight tickles the monster's snout and makes him sneeze. He stretches, blinks and yawns voluptuously. Suddenly, he sits bolt upright. What? I'm not. I'm not dead. Dumbfounded to find himself alive, the monster listens to the beating of his heart. By what miracle has he regained his strength? He breathes the morning air, fills his he breathes the morning air, fills his lungs. The monster has never felt so fit in his life. How can this be? he murmurs, thinking of all the poison he swallowed during the night. All night by their night long festivities, the wild children snore at his feet, the yark sniffs at them, their scent of leather, earwax and rotting olives repulses him. However, this morning something is different. The smell of scoundrels is making his mouth water. Baffled by this mystery, the yark loosens his tie and kneels beside the children to get a better whiff. Yum, what a good smell. Bad children, he purrs, as astonished as he is hungry. His cherry red tongue licks greedily over their tiny heads, but a flicker of pity keeps him from biting. In their sleep, these little wretches seem so touching, so fragile. The gallant monster asks himself, would they be so nasty if they hadn't been abandoned? Would they be so cruel if they had truly been loved? They certainly would, he roars without further effort to work it out, and he throws himself on the children and munches them down every last one. One hundred and two bad kids, the Yark exclaimed triumphantly, since he has counted each mouthful. One hundred and two bad kids, and not even a tummy ache, nothing, not a single side effect. One hundred and two bad kids and not even a stray fart, whereupon the yark breaks into a dance of joy, and in spite of his abundant breakfast, he's never felt so light. Hmm, interesting. Let's see, I think I'm going to move on to chapter 12. Around the world. When a gigantic, uh, around the, yeah, chapter 12, around the world. When a gigantic finger taps delicately at the lighthouse window, Madeline's, fa Madeline's face lights up with an immense smile. The little girl jumps out onto the yark's shoulders and the two of them celebrate their reunion with a series of loop-the-loops above the waves. That evening, while sampling a jar of candied fruit, the monster regales Madeline with the account of his extraordinary, extraordinary adventure. He is certainly astonished to have survived his ordeal with the wild children, but he's even more amazed to have successfully digested them. Divine miracle, the yark proclaims. To Madeline, there's nothing supernatural about it, citing the adage, that which does not kill me can only make me stronger. She explained that those tiny doses of bad children acted like a vaccine. Instead of killing him, the small quantities of poison immunised him, um, immunise him against the toxic flesh of the rascals. The Ark doesn't understand much of that explanation, but he nevertheless smacks his lips at the conclusion. So now I can stuff myself with all the children in the whole world, he exclaims. Freedom would mean that you could live without eating anyone, the little girl replies. To live without eating, the monster yelps. To live without killing anyone, Madeline corrects him with a laugh. But it's in a monster's nature to eat little children, the yark says indignantly. There's no law that says so, Madeline replies. There's only what each of us decide for ourselves. Well, I'm pretty sure I'll never change. Really? Then why haven't you eaten me, Madeline retorts in a mischievous tone. Not knowing how to reply, the yark says nothing. After a moment's thought, he lifts his hand to his heart, to his hand to his heart. Don't worry, I'll only eat brats from now on. Only wild children growing up in the forest. But Madeline doesn't care whether the yark's meals are nice or naughty. What bothers her is the fact that in order to live, he has to kill another living being. In his embarrassment, the monster hastily promised, "All right then, I swear it. I'll never eat another child." Liar. 
because that very night, after making sure that Madeline is sleeping like a baby, this glutton flies out the window to test his limitless appetite on children around the world. From high in the sky, the yark clicks himself, drops sharply to the earth, and he lands by chance in Morocco. His sense of smell leads him into a small house from which a delicious smell emanates, his mouth watering in anticipation. He slides into the bedroom, laughing to himself. <laughs> Whether he's a good boy or an utter brat, I'll gulp him down in a single bite. But the monster is startled when he sees the child in his bed. This little Moroccan boy could be mistaken for Madeline. And even though he looks nothing like her, the yark couldn't nonetheless swear he's her twin. The shock spoils his appetite, so he hurries out of the room and flies straight off to South Asia. With great star at strides, the monster sails through rice paddies, cursing the mosquitoes as he goes. But never mind the bites. The monster is running full speed towards an orphanage. In the silent dormitory, he creeps between the rows of little beds. When a splinter pierces his bottom, the stoical monster refrains from crying out. Still, when he leans over the children, he can't keep back a howl. All these little Vietnamese children look like Madeline. I'm losing my mind, the yark helps, trembling. He rubs his eyes as he runs from bed to bed, but the yark sees in each face the one child he could never eat. All night long, the Yark visits thousands of bedrooms across all the Earth's continents. And even though he travels from Spain to Bulgaria, from India to the United States, all the children of the world seem to have taken Madeline's features. For a long time, the monster thinks he is suffering from hallucinations. Then at last he admits that the love of, of a little girl has made him see the world differently. Since that night, the Yark has never eaten another child. Okay, we are now in the final uh, chapter and it's a very short chapter. So, the Yark has changed, no longer eating good or bad children. And this is all because of Madeline, um, who has helped him to change from being a monster. The Yark and Madeline still live at the top of the lighthouse. Oh, chapter 13, sorry, it's called His Story. The Yark and Madeline still live at the top of the lighthouse, far from the rest of the world. They look after each other and lead a pleasant, secluded existence. And when the monster yields his paintbrushes these days, he creates magnificent works of art. Sometimes the taste of children comes back to him, and he recalls the feeding frenzies of days gone by. Then when Madeline is asleep, the Yark leaps onto the roof and vanishes into the night. If you look up, you might see him gliding over the rooftops. But don't be frightened. The yark is no longer led by the nose. He flies with his eyes wide open. Sometimes his gaze is drawn to the lighted window of a bedroom. And even if it's no more than a candle flame, the yark sees it as a distress flare, a lighthouse in the night, the signal of a nightmare that's woken a child in its bed. That is when the monster descends on to the earth. His hook nails open the front door. He creeps along the hallway and climbs the stairs without a sound. Stalking like a silent wolf, he squeezes into the bedroom. His hand slides slightly over the wall to switch off the light. As he approaches the bed, he catches a whiff of a child, terrified in the dark. And to help the child go back to sleep, the yark tells his story. And so that's the end. Um, I think it's a lovely end. It's the end that I would have wanted. I don't think I would have wanted the yark to continue eating children um i really really enjoyed this book um for me it was the humor and the language um that really sort of brought the story to life um what i want you to think about is perhaps what do you think are some of the key themes in the book what um is the big overall message in the book um because there to me there does seem to be that there is an overall message um, the big thing is, can a person change if, if you feel like you're in a particular way? Uh, he was, you know, there was, for me, the interesting discussion was, um, where's that bit? When he goes back to Madeline. Um, but it's in a monster's nature to eat little children. Do you think that, um, if it's in your nature that you can change these things, or do you actually think that perhaps... Um, uh, you can change and you can be redeemed. So I want you to leave you with that thought. Um, Miss Kassam will be doing st the next set of story times and I will be back at some point to read you another story. And I think we are going to be reading Journey to Joburg. 
um, and that's the story I've chosen for us to read. Again, that's a really, really nice book. Very different to this, um, but it will build on that. I would like you, before I start reading Journey to Johannesburg, maybe find Johannesburg, find out where it is. It's in South Africa. Find out some more information. I know you did some sort of work, um, I think it was in year four about Nelson Mandela and everything that's happening. So I would really like you, before we start learning, uh, reading the story together, to find out some information about that. But I hope you are all well. Um, I know some parents are watching, so thank you for joining your children. Really appreciate the fact that you are sitting with your children and listening to story time. Um, and thank you for the lovely um, email that one of the parents, you know who you are, who sent in. It was forwarded to me, so thank you very much for that. I hope you keep well and safe and I will see you soon. Take care.